Hey guys, this is another episode of BC Films, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. It's going to be uh, movie reviews. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Marvel and pretty much kind of like theories around them. Uh, just little debates and opinions and whatnot. Um, today, you're going to be with Dre and uh, Jack. And also, I'd say it's kind of more just movie talk more than movie review. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, that, that seems a little bit more on the nose. Um, anyways, uh, what were we going to start with? We were going to start with um, the topic of the Infinity Stones, right? Yep. Okay, so <coughs> a big thing that we've just been talking about lately is with Thanos, how in the first Avengers it was, how he gave Loki the scepter. And in the second Avengers, it's kind of shown... Spoiler alert. Oh, by yeah. the way, which yes. if those who have not seen the second Avengers, I recommend you do not, you know, listen to us talk only for the fact that we don't want to ruin the movie for you. Um, it's not that we have joy in ruining the movies. I'm sure he does. <laughs> um, it's it definitely a big surprise. But we were kind of talking about how Thanos, if Thanos knew and wanted the Infinity Stones so much, as you've seen probably from the Guardians of the Galaxy, why in the world would he give Loki the scepter in which carried an Infinity Stone? It just kind of like blows the purpose away. Yeah, I mean, we'd almost have to <coughs> assume that he didn't know it was in there. But also, I mean, how could he have not known it was in there? Uh, yeah, it, it is one of those things where like, what if Loki would have figured out that thing was in there? You know? Yeah, I mean, he. I feel like Loki would have used it at that point. I, f I think so too. I think he would have challenged Thanos himself, rather mm -hmm. than trying to take Thor. Why? Uh, I mean, not Thor, the Earth. Why take the Earth when you can have the entire universe? Yeah. <coughs> I mean, it's pretty much all for that part. I mean, <coughs> really, we're just confused as to why Thanos just didn't keep the scepter if he already had it. Yeah, the, the, I think that's mainly the, the biggest problem with the first Avengers. After you've watched the second Avengers, of course, yeah, once you yeah. find out what the crap's in that scepter. <coughs> um, I think the second one is uh, kind of the story surrounding uh, Drax. Drax, yeah, okay. So the thing <coughs> is, so in the comic books, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge expert on this. Neither, neither am I. I, we, we, I mean, we've, just we've kind of been, been doing yeah. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> we've kind of been, and I, I, I really wish that we did read some of these comics and stuff. That way we can keep up, give a lot more, you know, detailed information about this. But, you know, we've been doing heavy research so we don't sound like retards. <laughs> um, but I think you can take it from here. So we were thinking... <laughs> We're kind of confused because in the Avengers movies, it really seems to have little to no relation at all with Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, you don't see uh, the, uh, whatever it's called, the intergalactic governments they have there. You don't see any of the races. So, I mean, you'd kind of have to assume that they almost haven't shown themselves to Earth yet. That they just don't really interact at all. <coughs> the thing is, in the comics, Thanos, who we're seeing a lot, I mean... He was in, again, lots of spoilers, in the end clip of the Avengers movie, essentially showing that he's Coming going to turn. action. I mean, it's he's actually going to be doing something. He's going to be a part of the, <laughs> the next movie, I think, the next Avengers movie. It's going to be, I think it's going to be, what, 2018, right? Yeah. And so the thing is, <laughs> uh, in the comic books, apparently, he was defeated by the Avengers, uh, Captain Marvel, and Drax the Destroyer, mm -hmm. who is part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Which, in that case, brings up, if Drax is there, you know for darn certain that Starler is going to show up because, you know, Earth is his last home or supposedly his only yeah. that he knows of. You know, it's it, it brings to reason, you know, why would Drax come alone? I mean, yeah. I mean, that is <laughs> the next, is the Infinity War, the next Avengers movie, <laughs> going to essentially join together Guardians of the Galaxy with the rest of the Marvel Universe so far. <laughs> I certainly hope it does, because there's a lot of there's a lot of humor between Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy, to which I really would love to see how they would collate with each other, mm -hmm. especially with um what's his name, uh, the guy who played American Sniper. Can't think of his name. It's off the top of my head. Bradley Cooper. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, the wit of Bradley Cooper mixed with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. And 
and uh, Mark Ruffalo, and I think, uh, what's his name? I don't remember the dude who plays Captain America. Uh, oh, whoever that guy is. Plus, I think Spider-Man's also going to be involved in that, too. So you got all these, like, humorous guys in there all making jokes while fighting. I think that's going to be hilarious. Mm. And also, <laughs> we were just talking about how with some of the people that defeat Thanos, one of them is Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, looking at the movie lineups, you can kind of see that with how the movies are going to work out. It's going to be Avengers Infinity War Part 1, <laughs> and then actually Captain Marvel movie itself, and then Infinity War Part 2. So we're thinking that either the Captain Marvel will be introduced near the very end of Part 1, or it'll be introduced, or she'll be introduced in the beginning of Part 2. Now, don't take our word for it. We might saying it. We're just saying it's just it's a possible That's stinger. What we think might yeah, happen. it's a possible stinger, it, and, and it might come up. <coughs> and we're <coughs> we're only saying that is because in the comics they really do make a strong reference as to where Captain and Marvel really does help, as well as you know Drax, and it's gonna be really interesting because they they're 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 planning on showing a lot new a lot of new characters which they said they've been implying in agents of shield if any if anybody's been watching i haven't neither have i no i've been meaning to get around to that um but yeah they've been meaning to plan in some new characters and stuff by the way um i think ant-man is actually supposed to be an introduction to some of the new movies as well um i think they're trying to introduce hank pym into it yeah, so as I so as I think, um, for those of you who don't know, if in like in the older Avenger movies, like the old cartoons made in like the nineties, I think. Don't exactly remember. Don't quote me. Um, they, the Avengers team consisted of Hank Pym and his wife Janet, with Thor, Captain America, um, and Bruce Banner and Black Widow, of course. Hank Pym and Janet. Um, Janet was known as the Wasp. For those who, yeah, I'm sure you don't know who the one no, is. No clue. Um, Wasp was kind of like Ant Man, just had wings and can shoot bee stuff. But like it was like just stingers. Mm. It, it hurt. Hmm. It's enough where you get a fly swatter. I, I mean, that's her pretty much. That's her arch nemesis, <laughs> in my opinion. It's kind of like it, it's, it's useful as Ant Man. Not much. Not much. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> Stealth missions, it's great. But for the fight, you don't really... You want Giant Man. You don't want Wasp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, the Hank Pym is actually... And, and, and also in the Avengers um, Age of Ultron 2, supposedly Hank Pym was the one who created Ultron, not Tony Stark and Mark Ruff, uh, and uh, Bruce Banner. <laughs> and yeah. Mark Ruffalo, yep. Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> Which, okay. Actually, that kind of brings us to the topic. We were kind of disagreeing with this. I think Mark Ruffalo makes... A lot better Bruce Banner than <laughs> Edward Norton does. I just think Edward Norton is like way too awkward. Like, I really love the chemistry that Mark Ruffalo and um, Robert Downey Jr. have together when they're acting as Tony Stark and uh, Bruce Banner. I, I like their chemistry, and I don't think Ed Nor Edward Norton would have that. that. That's not the part I'm disagreeing with you, but I'm disagreeing with the part of that, the fact that the way they made Hulk. The way they made Hulk with yeah. Edward Norton is completely different to the way they make him in the Avengers. And that's what I brought up, you know, with my family when I went to watch the movies myself. Is that I was expecting the Hulk to be the big massive dude we saw in The Incredible Hulk in 2008 with Edward Norton. Instead, we kind of got this green giant ape hmm. going around as the Hulk. Yeah. Who looked exactly like Mark Ruffalo with chest hair. I mean, seriously, I've never seen the Hulk with chest hair. I mean, it does kind of make sense to have him look more like the uh, actor who's playing him. I mean, if he looks completely different, then what's the point? I mean, that kind of goes back to, like, the really old uh, Incredible Hulk. I think it was the movies with... What was his name? Lou Ferrigno um, and... Yeah, I mean... The, the other dude pretty who's just... pretty much insignificant, because yeah. you don't know who plays Banner. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it looked a lot like him. I mean, that was, that was part of the Hulk. I, I guess. And, I mean... <clears throat> And, and, and I'm like, okay, I think we can all agree, <coughs> the, uh, the Hulk in the <coughs> Incredible Hulk movie look nothing like Edward Norton. Like, seriously, like, if you put a side-by-side -side <coughs> comparison, that Hulk looks more like fucking me than Edward Norton. I mean, I just think, I think, Edward, <coughs> I think he looks weird, Edward Norton. 
Yeah. Yeah. Not 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 dissing on. I mean, everybody looks weird no, in their diss, own way. I, I'm totally dissing on him. <laughs> I don't like him as an actor. <laughs> yeah, that I know for a fact. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, he's got other good movies, but no, we're not good. talking about that. I mean, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and you going back to the Infinity Stones, um, mentioned in most of these comics that we've been looking at, it's been talking about the cube a lot. Yeah. Talking about how Thanos has been pretty much obsessed with it, and his also Thanos' uh, like, love for Mistress Death, who's also another character of Marvel who have, has yet been introduced. To the not movies. Sure, right? Yeah, to yeah. the movies. Um, it's supposedly in the comics, he Thanos loved death so much that he went and built his grand army for her and started annihilating people. Killed off his own family. His own race. Um, supposedly there's rumors to where his father is actually Drax the Destroyer. No, no, it no, was... was that, no, no um, it was <coughs> that when he was first coming to Earth, it <coughs> was... um. So he essentially accidentally killed a family, but... um. Kronos took the spirit of the father of the family oh, okay. and made him Drax the Destroyer. That makes more sense. Okay, yeah. thank you. I was going to say, I was like, I can understand Drax is hell-bent for, you know, revenge. revenge if it was his own son, you know, going after that. But seeing that it was just like a cold, senseless killing and just the hatred and revenge just burned into one body. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah. It does seem like they changed uh, um, Drax's um, origin story in the yeah, movies. They kind of did. Just because they actually missed <coughs> that's the way he always was. They kind of made that his race, his, uh, already his personality. Uh, um, and also they changed who killed him. Like, what was his name? Um, I can't remember his, um, the purple guy. Um, uh, Turdface. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He was really forgettable oh, me. to me. I'm gonna get, get... Excuse us for a second. <clears throat> Ronan. Ronan. Thank you, Ronan. Okay, Ronan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <coughs> in the movies, it was Ronan who killed his family. Mm, not Thanos. And it wasn't even by... It was like in a war type situation. Mm -hmm. Rather than Thanos accidentally... And I wonder why they did that because Drax was actually Arthur Douglas of Earth. Yeah. So maybe they couldn't just have two people. They couldn't. They couldn't intertwine two people from Earth. Star Lord, Peter Quill, and Arthur Douglas, Drax the Destroyer, coming to Earth at the exact or at Earth the exact same time, exact same you know, kind of intertwine the stories and then both meet up somewhere in space. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was just a little bit too hard for them to grasp for the audience. Yeah, who knows? We are not Stanley in all of them. Yeah. <coughs> um, I th I think. Oh, point I was trying to make. Totally all over the place. But when they did mention the cube, they in the movies, in the movie history, and in, in the movie lineups, supposedly Asgard has their grip on the cube, right? Because they don't want the Jotunheims or the Jotun people getting it. But supposedly that itself is an Infinity Stone as well. Yeah. And at the end of Thor The Dark World, Lady Sif and the guy with the beard, the big old guy who loves to drink and eat yeah. gluttony and whatever. That one guy. Yeah, that guy. I don't even know if he has a name. <laughs> <laughs> if so, I'm probably ignorant and probably didn't even know it. Um... But they go to the Collector, who, which another is a big, you know, character, goes to the Collector and gives one of the Infinity Stones to the Collector. And at the end of that scene, the Collector goes, good, only seven more or over seven or six more Infinity Stones to go. Do you know how many there actually are? I thought there were seven. Okay, if there's seven, then he only has <clears throat> one. But if there's... Yeah, but I think that's why he got excited in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Because then he was going to be able to get a second one. Right. So the thing is, does he... S okay. <coughs> so you know how in Guardians of the Galaxy, um, they essentially mess up his collection, gets all blown up and crap. It's all messed up. So does he still have the Infinity Stone? No, 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 no. Um, Do you remember at the end of the movie? 
No, I'm talking about the first one that he got. The first one, I'm not. Them. But see, that's the part. That's that's the part we're trying to figure out because that happened after Thor: The Dark World, which act at that point after after the Avengers. So the timeline between the Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy is still a little bit skewed. We don't know if that's intertwined or if it's on the same page as it going along as um, mm. with the Avengers. That's what we're. That's you know basically the whole theory. If Guardians of the Galaxy is lined up with the Avengers, will they come into play to fight Thanos in the Infinity Wars? <clears throat> Maybe because the timeline they seem to be setting up the timelines as always. It's almost intercurring or happening within each other. Yeah. Like a chain of events that's just happening and it's just eventually going down the line. <coughs> so, it, it's hard to say. I, I want to say that, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy will make an appearance with the Avengers. But at the same time, I know it could be somewhat possible or somewhat improbable. Only because of Star-Lord's age. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I guess it just kind of all depends.